Hi, Alex here, CTO and co-founder of Rebeloper.com and welcome back to this tutorial where I will teach you how you can create an AR kit joystick. You will learn how to create a D-pad in scene kit, well, basically in sprite kit and AR kit. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, I have created this virtual iOS joystick video tutorial and one of our commenters just asked me how you can do it in SceneKit because uh, as you can see this iOS joystick is in SpriteKit and we wanted to know how we can add this into ARKit. Okay, let me just scroll down here to the comments. And it says, could you make this video, but using an overlay SK scene to add the joystick to a scene kit game? I have some issues with that and I would love your in. Okay, now I have decided to create this in AR kit because it's much more advanced, but go ahead and you can do this the same in the scene kit game too. Okay. And let's go and of course uh, one reminder we are using uh, this uh, Mikrof D's uh, uh, GitHub repository analog joystick. Uh, if you haven't already done so take a look at my previous tutorial where I uh, introduce you how to add a joystick into a sprite kit game so you just know uh, the fundamentals and how uh, this joysticks the joystick works and uh, uh, let's go and uh, take a look at the project that I have created for AR kit go ahead and go to my github repository and uh, download or clone AR joystick okay and once you do that you will be presented with this project okay uh, I have created this starter project because it's kind of a hassle to uh, set up this AR uh, basic project uh, here in this tutorial we will not uh, have the time for that uh, in this video but I will go through uh, these uh, files so you may understand how this AR uh, game is set up and maybe learn some principles and some tricks and uh, how to's along the way about AR kit. Okay, first of all, as usual, I have removed the main storyboard. We are going to do this all in code and I know that many of you uh, appreciate this and really like this, so in code. Okay. Uh, first of all, we remove the main scene, uh, main dot storyboard, and inside the app delegate, I have created our window, made it key and visible, then uh, created a reference to our view controller, added to the Windows root, root view controller, and here comes uh, some. <laughs> you, well, you may not recognize this. UI application shared is either timer disabled and I set this to true. Now what exactly is this? Well, uh, after a while when you launch an AR kit um, game or an app, after a while the screen dims down and this uh, prevents that from doing that. Okay. Let's go and take a look at the other files. Well, of course, we have our view controller and I will uh, take a little deeper look uh, in the view controller in uh, the next minutes. Uh, let's take a look at the others. Well, we have uh, some extensions. Go ahead and take a look at that. Well, we have some constraints and here the screen size, device type and an extension for our essay notes size. Okay, uh, I believe we will not use this uh, in this project, but good to know. Okay, uh, then we have our AR joystick SK scene. Now this is a scene because we are going to add an SK scene on top of our AR kit uh, view. Okay, we'll talk about this later on. 
and I will go through the contents. As you can see, it's not that much. Uh, we go through these contents uh, later. Here we have our analog joystick downloaded from uh, uh, Dimitri Mitrofansky. <laughs> I probably didn't spell that I tried. Okay, uh, then we have our constants here and uh, we have our focus scene path, floor scene path and uh, some messages. Okay, and we will talk about this uh, too later on. Of course, as you can see, all over the uh, what we are going to work are uh, commented out. Okay. Uh, one last thing here we have our assets, uh, the joysticks, um, elements. Uh, if you recall from the previous video, we have our joystick and a substrate. Well, basically, the substrate is the background and the joystick is what you move around. Okay, let's take a look at our art. We have some models here and some textures. We have a floor, a focus scene, and a hero. Okay, here we have our PNGs for that, floor, focus, hero, and of course we have a surface for lane detection. Okay, let's build and run and see what this app does and then I will jump right into the view controller so we may take a look at the code. So I have selected my uh, phone. Of course, you know that this needs to be run on an actual device that supports AR kit. Okay, let's unlock this and see how uh, this app is performing just right now. Okay, let's wait for that. Okay, uh, let me just, as you can see here, we have our plane detection and the floor has been detected. Here we have our focus node and uh, this focus node is the focus of our screen. And this is the center of uh, where our plane, our floor, will be put. So, if you can see at the top of our screen here, we have a start button and this appeared uh, when uh, a plane was detected. So, let's tap on that and uh, voila! A floor has been added and right into the center our tank, our hero, has been added. And that is it. That is it. That's basically what this app does right now. What we want to add now is a, a, joy, a joystick that moves this hero around. Okay, now let's stop this. And before we implement this, let's take a look at the structure of our AR kit game. And in the meantime, you will learn some basics of how you should basically set up your AR kit game. So let's go into view controller. Of course, you know this view controller is loaded programmatically, not through the main dot storyboard. Okay, let's take a look and dissect this view controller before we get into our joystick implementation. First of all, we have a game state structure. And this is because, as you <laughs> might have already noticed, when you start up an AR kit game, it doesn't really uh, jump right into the action. You need some surface detection, some plane detection, then you need to put your, well, basically your game word in onto that plane. And uh, this uh, is not quite straightforward. So we need to have some game states. So the first one is the text surface, is when you scan, scan the playable surface, a pl uh, floor or your tabletop. Okay, now you want to point to the surface next up when you have uh, detected a plane, then you want to point where you want to put your game word. Well, basically that's where that focus knob was uh, turning around and that's the center of our floor. And finally, once you hit that start button, then you uh, convert to the ready to play game state. And that is when the jo uh, joypad, uh, joystick will appear and so on. And you can just simply play your game. 
Okay. Next up is of course we our view controller class and here we have some properties. Our ARSE and view and this is added programmatically of course because we have gotten rid of our main dot storyboard and it's a plain old ARSE and view that we will add uh, as, later on as we just scroll down. Uh, next up we have our start button and uh, its target is this start game function. We will talk about it later. And here we have some stylization with corner radius and background color. Oh, okay. Uh, next up we have a variable for the game state of, uh, and it is set to uh, the default detect surface because that's how our game starts. We have our focus point uh, and that is the point on the screen of your device, okay? And we will set that down later on. Game word center transform. Now this is the center of our game word, basically where we will put the uh, game, of course, and that is uh, inherited from our focus point when we tap on the start. I uh, really hope that really makes sense. Of course, we have our status message and tracking status. The, these two combined will uh, put up a log as a status. Uh, if you have noticed that in the log when I demoed the, this app, you can see that a lot of status messages appear there. Okay, we have our focus knot, that's the little square that was turning around. We have our floor and our hero, and these nodes are created from our floor template node and our hero template node. Now, this is good uh, because uh, we can use these templates to add multiple nodes. Of course, for the floor and the hero, this really doesn't make sense, but just think about if we have some trees or enemies, then we can spawn multiple enemies from that template enemy node. So uh, it's a good practice to add all of these nodes from our template node. Okay, here we have our view did load. And after the super view did load, we set up a, our AR SCN view. We initialize our scene view, our scene, and our AR session. After that, we load our models, add our focus knot, and set up a, our AR SCN view subviews. Now let's take all of this one at a time. Set up AR SCN view. Let's jump to this definition. And as you can see, we just simply add our AR SCN view that we have declared in the properties uh, section and we set uh, its uh, anchors to fill our super view. Now this fill super view uh, comes from, let's jump to this definition, comes from our extensions, okay? Uh, let me just go back here and uh, let's take a look at our init scene view. Let's jump to definition again. Uh, what we are basically doing here is set the delegate of our, our ARSCN view because down below, uh, if you just take a look here, we have an extension with an ARSCN view delegate and that takes care of the scene kit uh, management, but we still need to set the delegate on self. Okay. Uh, ARSNU auto enables default lighting. We are setting this to true, so we may see some shadows here and there. Okay, and uh, we are setting the focus point to our views center, uh, x center, and our views y center, and plus 25% uh, of our y center. Now, uh, this basically sets our uh, focus point right here, well, basically here. And uh, uh, that uh, you, what you need to know here is that this is the views center point. And we are going to use this uh, for hit testing our plane. Okay, let's go back. And next up is init scene. Okay. 
uh, well, we create an SEN scene, uh, we set its is host property to false and add this scene to our AR SEN views scene property. Pretty simple. Okay, and now we have a scene, now we need to initialize our AR session. Okay, let's jump to definition here. First of all, we uh, check if AR word tracking configuration is supported, well, basically, if AR kit or AR isn't supported by this device, then we just return and uh, print out a message. Okay, uh, here we set up our configuration. Uh, pretty boring stuff. Well, maybe let's talk about plane detection. It is horizontal. We don't want vertical for now. And then we run our session with this configuration and we want to reset the tracking and remove uh, existing anchors if there are any. Uh, next up is to load our models and if you recall I have uh, talked about creating template nodes and then after that we use those templates. Well here we uh, well, create those templates, we load our models and we create it for our focus node from our focus scene and we set our focus node uh, to be hidden because we don't want uh, that uh, focus node to be circling around in the air uh, up until we detect some plane. So we will add that focus node, we will set the hidden property to, uh, is hidden property to false once we detect a plane. Next up is our floor scene where we create our floor template node and our hero template node. Okay, uh, we will use these template nodes later on when we add our nodes. Now that we have loaded our models and we have loaded our focus node, we want to add our focus node to our scene. So let's jump into definition here. And basically we are adding our focus node into our uh, scenes root node. Okay, that is pretty simple. Now we want to set up our SCN view sub views. Let's jump to definition here and we are simply adding a star button and we are anchoring it to the top of our scene. Okay, now uh, that is it for our view did load. We'll talk about uh, all of these commented out sections later on when we talk about the joystick. Okay, let's scroll down and take a look at what we have missed. When we have our view will appear, view di will disappear, did receive manual rewarding. Okay, you can create uh, print statements here or maybe uh, some log, uh, some uh, alerts. Okay, uh, prefers status bar hidden. I am setting this to true because I don't really like the status bar showing up on my AR. Uh, kit games. It is up to you if you decide to uh, set this to false. Okay, uh, we have covered all of these. Uh, we have covered initialization, loading models, adding the focus node. Now here we have our helper functions. Okay, we have our create AR plane node and we have update AR plane node and remove AR plane node. Now, where are these used? Well, if you just scroll down under plane management, you will see that once uh, AR kit finds a plane and it says uh, an anchor did add, uh, renderer did add uh, not for anchor, we are creating an AR plane node and we are creating this from our surface here. I won't go into detail with this function. What it does is basically puts uh, a plane node onto the plane anchor. Okay, and here of course we uh, set the start button. If the start button is hidden, we set it is, is hidden property to false, where basically we are showing it and we are showing the focus node to Remember, we have hidden it earlier on. Okay, and we also need to talk about the update AR plane node. Well, 
what this does in the renderer I did the update for anchor uh, function we are updating the size of the AR planar as you can see if uh, it finds the plane anchor to be larger we are updating this AR play node to its size okay and in the edit remove uh, function we are removing our AR plane node okay and those are the helper functions uh, here okay uh, update focus a node as you can see when I move around my camera that focus node uh, moved along the plane on and that plane and that is what this function does it updates the uh, focus point and with that focus point we have our hit test uh, with the existing uh, plane using well it basically uh, fetches if our focus point is hit testing our existing plane node on the Floor. and if we do have a result then we get our word transform and add where the transform is basically the position in the word of our uh, hit test and then we add the focus nodes position we set that position to our um, hit tests uh, transform okay and of course we have some game state uh, set up, we set ready to play, otherwise point to surface and so on. Now where is this update focus node added? Well, we want to update the focus node uh, continuously and that is inside our uh, scene kit management renderer update at time. And as you can see, update a focus node is here. Uh, we set this on the main thread because we are uh, manipulating the UI and this update at time is uh, called on the background thread so we need to call dispatch queue main async and while we are here let's talk about this update status and this is uh, down here update status it checks for the game state and if it's detect surface then it says uh, well it prints out a status log and all of this is taken care of in this switch statement okay uh, let's, yeah and one thing here you can see tracking status uh, not just our game status we have our tracking status and that is uh, set up in the sessions did uh, camera did change tracking change tracking state well I just can't talk and uh, we are basically uh, checking our tracking state for the camera of course and we are handling the cases not available normal and we will of course print this out in the status okay and uh, here we have our session error management and of course we of co uh, take a look at our did fail with error or session was interrupted or session interruption ended and here we just simply add our string to our tracking status uh, let me just show you all of uh, these strings they are inside the constants uh, file there you have it all of them right inside here go ahead and take a look at deeper look if you want to okay let's go back to our update focus node and scroll down of course we have our suspend AR plane detection and uh, let me just copy this out and take a look at where this is called yes it's it is called in the start game we'll talk about the start game later on but once you want to start the game you hit that start button uh, you want to suspend AR plane detection and that is logical okay and we want to hide the AR plane nodes of course and what we do here is collect all of the uh, uh, all of the nodes that are associated to our anchors and we set the material uh, materials color buffering right mass to an empty array and what this really does is uh, does it doesn't allow 
our material to accept any material with colors or uh, PNG sprites and so on. So it basically disappears. Okay, uh, here we have our game logic and we have finally gotten to the point where we do have a plane, we want to uh, add our floor, so we hit the start button and upon tapping on that start button, the start game function uh, is triggered. Of course, we want to call this on the main thread again because we want to hide the start button, we want to hide the focus node, we want to suspend AR plane detection and hide AR plane nodes. I have just talked this uh, in the previous minute. We want to set the game state to the point to surface and we want to create our game world. Okay. Uh, one little thing, uh, didn't we want to create, uh, set our game state to ready to play? No, not just yet, because we want to set this to point to surface and not ready to play, because we are just creating our game world in the next second. So let's create our game world and we want to get our focus nodes transform and set it the, to the game world center transform. This is a variable, a global variable that we use uh, in just a minute when we put our floor uh, at the center of our focus node. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, uh, next up we want to add our floor and add our hero and we are nearing our com completion of our tour. We add our floor and that is pretty simple. We uh, clone our floor template node, uh, we give the name of floor and here we position it to our game world center transforms uh, M4 property. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the positioning. I won't go into detail here. And here we have our rotate and rotate transform and we uh, transform our, we, we, we change our transform of our floor. And what this basically does is, uh, well, uh, turns this uh, floor uh, to you, to the point of our camera. If we omitted this, then it wouldn't turn. It would use just the standard uh, rotation of how you started this scene with the, your hand, your hand, the the phone, and this does that. Okay, and finally we want to add our hero to our floor. We are. Uh, setting this up from our hero template node, giving it a name of our hero. We are positioning it, well, five centimeters uh, or five millimeters, five centimeters above our floor to the dead center of it. We um, set our Euler angles and I want to pause here to talk about this. Well, maybe your uh, here, let me just go here. Your uh, hero, your hero SCN file is set up like this. Well, maybe you want to turn it around and that is how you can do it. You set its Euler angles Y position 180 degrees to radians because this is a helper function here and it is set in the extensions uh, because uh, this vectors need a radiance. Okay, and we scale this down quite a bit because it is a large object set up in our SEN file. And of course we add this to our floor. And that is it for our view controller. Hope this makes sense, but I really wanted to show you how this is all set up because uh, so you understand uh, what we are having here. Okay, now Finally, let's add our joystick. Now, first of all, let's take a look at our AR joystick SKC. Um, uh, if you have taken a look at my previous video and go ahead and do take a look at it, uh, I will I'll go into detail what this analog joystick is and I don't want to uh, do this here. And basically, we are 
creating an SK scene that we are going to add at the bottom of our screen here. And in this SK scene, we will put an analog joystick with a diameter of 100. We are uh, setting this up in our did move to view. And uh, if you recall, we can handle the, the tracking and th this is pretty awesome because it's uh, just one line of code we need to uh, post a notification that will be caught in the view controller so let's uh, uncomment this and of course our joystick notification name will be not found so let's go into our constants and uncomment that Okay, and now uh, what we want to do is listen for these notifications in our view controller. So let's go to our view did load here, view did load, and let's set up our notification. Okay, now we observe the joystick uh, notification name and what we want to do here uh, let's go back and let's see what we are passing in here we are passing in our data that we got from our analog joystick as a user info and our key of course is the data pretty convenient so we uh, check if we do have our user info and then we unwrap our data as an analog joystick data. Pretty simple. If you want to, then you just uh, print out the description of your uh, data in the log. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We want to set the hero's position uh, according to this data. And if you recall, we have used the velocity. Okay, and we are using a velocity multiplier, how fast the, the hero should move according to our movement on the joystick. And for that, let me just go to the constant and uh, uncomment that too. If you recall, we had a much larger velocity multiplier in the scene kit game. Well, in uh, AR kit, we need to set it much, much lower than that. Okay. And here we have it. So we are basically setting the X position of our hero to our data velocities X multiplied by our joystick velocity multiplier, of course. And uh, uh, you might want, you might be tempted to set the Y position, but remember the Y position is not um, well, not the same as in scene kit, uh, sprite kit of course we want to use the depth we want to move it forward or backward or to right or left and that is why we use the velocities y parameter on the z position positions z value okay oh that makes sense and after that we want to basically uh, move its tip to where we are moving and that we are using as inside the stride kit uh, example we are using the data's angular and that is pretty simple we uh, set the uh, an euler angles y parameter to our data angular plus we turn it around by 180 degrees and this is quite strange I don't really know why I needed to do that but if I didn't add that then we would drag this hero by its rear okay uh, let's hit a uh, command B and see what else is missing well I really I really know what is missing we are missing our SK view when our sprite kit here. So let's go all the way up and uncomment our SK view. If you are watching my videos, then you already know what I'm talking about. 
what you should be aware of is that we are setting our background to clear so we may see through this SK view and of course let me just go to our SK scene we are setting its background color to clear also okay uh, what is up next let's just scroll down and let's set up our SK view and uh, uh, set up our SK view scene. Now these won't be found because I need to uncomment them. Let's just scroll down here. So first of all, let's set up our SK view. What we are doing is basically adding our SK view to our sub view and we are anchoring it to the bottom, to the right, to the left, and we are giving it a height of 180. Well, uh, this could be uh, another constant for you. Uh, take a look at the AR joystick SK scene and make sure that this analog joystick uh, fits into uh, these parameters. Next up, we want to add our AR joystick SK scene to this SK view. So let's uh, do that. Let's uncomment this here. And what we are basically creating a, a scene with a size that we have set up for our SK view. So make sure 180, 180 is the same. Uh, okay, now I believe we are ready to go. So let's hit Command R and take a look at our game here. Okay, and let's wait for it. Here we go. Let's see if we do get a play. Maybe we are missing something, so let me just double check. Yes, let's just scroll down, scroll down. We need to uh, set the SK views is hidden to false in the create game world because once we create our game world, we want this uh, to appear. Okay, and I believe we are ready to go. Let me just double check here fast. So let's build and run this thing. Okay, here we go. And hopefully we will get our play detection right now. Here we go and let's tap on start here we have our floor and let's see if this really worked and it did pretty cool eh okay and that's it for adding a joystick to your ar kit games hope you enjoyed this video if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you may get notified when new videos are posted. And if you are a real eager Rebelloper fan, go ahead and take a look at our site rebelloper.com and subscribe to our email list where I post and send you special offers and special knowledge tutorials and so on only for Rebelloper email subscribers. Okay, now it's up to you. What do you think? Is this a really good uh, AR um, joystick that you can implement into your AR kit and scene kit games? Or do you have something else in mind? Go ahead and comment down below. I usually take a look at the comments within one or two hour uh, after publishing. So make sure that you always take a look at when I publish and comment in the comment section with your, maybe you have some questions, maybe you have some issues or maybe you have some suggestions. Go ahead and comment down in the comments below. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I will see you in the next one.